Have you ever thought about your place in the universe? Or the ground you walk on? Or the rocks you touch? Or why cliffs look a certain way? I know I did. Growing up, I was fascinated by the world around me and so I've dedicated my life to studying geology, the subject of why the earth looks the way it does. Welcome here to the island of Tenerife, a volcanic island situated in the Canaries, about 200 miles off the west coast of Africa. Tenerife's volcano Tidy, when measured from the seafloor, makes it the fourth highest volcano in the world. Before coming to this island, I wondered if the locals were concerned at all about the possibility of an eruption. I interviewed Faku Marira, a local who lives on this island. So here I'm sitting with Faku Marira, a local from the island, and I'm just going to ask him a few questions about his life here on Tenerife. So Faku, do you ever worry about the volcano? La verdad que es algo que no piensas porque tú vas haciendo una vida, estás acostumbrado a salir, a conocer todo el paisaje, lo que sea, y realmente tú ves al final, lo tomas más como una montaña que está muerta y no algo como que está activo, entonces acabas conviviendo con ellos sin ningún problema. Sí, aquí sobre todo es lo que más enseña siempre, te enseñan qué tipo de, justamente que todas las islas son de origen volcánico, te enseñan cuáles son los riesgos, cuáles el tipo de vida que se tiene aquí debido a eso, pero por eso mismo lo tomo con naturalidad siempre. Sí, posiblemente el resto de mi vida porque me gusta. Viajaría, pero siempre volvería aquí. Es un sitio que me gusta y es bueno para vivir aquí. So, not something that you worry about. No, para nada. Es que realmente incluso es el encanto un poco de vivir aquí. Muchas gracias por la por su tiempo. Thank you. I was surprised by how calm the locals were. I thought I'd find out more. I went away on a trip with Dr. Richard Brown, a volcanologist from Durham University. He was teaching a bunch of students about pumice fall and ignimbrite deposits. I wondered what the significance of this was and so caught up with Dr. Alexa Schwartz, a volcanologist working for Geo Tenerife while the rest of the students were hard at work. When you study the deposits left behind by these eruptions, then you can start thinking how frequent these eruptions are and what type of eruption you is likely to happen. You see what I mean? As you mentioned, we study igneous rocks, but not only that, we study also pumice fall deposits, which are the two main types of uh, deposits left behind by these explosive eruptions. Okay, so that's the way. We, we determine the, the frequency of possible events, both basaltic or more uh, plinian, more uh, phonolithic type of eruption. So, so we study all the deposits, and when we study that, then we say, okay, well, every certain time, a period of time, say in the case of basalts, every hundred years, in the case of plinian eruptions, every few tens of thousands of years, that's the frequency. Okay, so, so the, the main reason to study these deposits is because then we can kind of estimate the frequency, the frequency of these events. The inside of the planet is very hot and volcanic eruptions are a means to cool the interior of the planet down. Ignimbrites are the deposits left behind by pyroclastic flows. Ignimbrites can thus tell us about how eruptions occur and this can help us to understand how to prevent human fatalities in the future. Understanding the frequency of eruptions is important because according to Alexis, the public is misinformed about the dangers of volcanoes. According to Alexis, getting into a car every day poses a higher risk to oneself than the possibility of an explosive eruption. What we have to realise is that the, all this very destructive phenomenon happen every few 
I mean, the periods of time between them are so, so long that humans shouldn't worry about it. It all became clear. Locals weren't worried because they were educated at school, but tourists were scaremongered by the media and so didn't have a realistic understanding of the risks associated with an eruption. I think it has to do with the education of the media, uh, the people in charge of the media and uh, the people working in, in the media. So what I learned is that the island is very safe for tourists. The last big eruption was 170,000 years ago and Alexis claims that humans have only been around for 100,000 years. So this happened before humanity was even around. What the scientists refer to when we talk about Tidy being overdue an eruption is of the basaltic kind, not the explosive. The basaltic kind is neither explosive nor dangerous. They are very short and only last a couple of weeks. Volcanic islands naturally have lots of seismic activity as there is magma and fluids moving around which fracture the rocks. When these rocks are fractured by the moving magma, they release seismic energy which can be detected by seismographs. Activity is constant on the island as it is a volcanic archipelago. Tens of hundreds of seismic events occur every day which the population doesn't feel. So to sum up, it is completely normal. Even after all this, people still can't help but wonder when the next eruption will be. To answer this question, I interviewed Dr. Richard Brown. So what's your personal opinion for when that will happen? Well, if we look into the past and we look at the sort of, I guess, the, the, um, the last few eruptions on Tenerife, and really we only know this for certain, over the period that Tenerife has been, um, I guess, inhabited by people who were um, keeping records of eruptions on the island. But in general, there's been a, one of these basaltic eruptions roughly once every 100 to 150 years. So the last eruption, El Chinero, up in the, the north, uh, northwest, sorry, um, is, uh, occurred about 100 years ago. So you could say we're, we're sort of, uh, ready for another small basaltic eruption on the island. Okay, it's not something um, to worry about. It's, it's, not, it's, it's not something that's going to have a far-reaching impact on the island. So there will be hazards, there are hazards associated with these sorts of eruptions and it depends on where that eruption occurs. So probably the most likely location for that is up in the northeast rift. And uh, there may be people nearby when the eruption occurs, it may occur near a road which would cause some disruption. Uh, the eruptions can go on for uh, days to weeks, so there's an ongoing hazard that may be present to aviation on the island. It's very, um, you don't want to take off or land aeroplanes when there's an eruption going on the island. Um, these eruptions produce lava flows, and lava flows travel downslope. And with an eruption up on the northeast rift, rift, that means that the lava will travel down either the west coast or the north coast and may impact people who live uh, in the region immediately below. Mm where the eruption occurs, but that impact will be minimal in terms of uh, the number of houses impacted or the number of people. Well, it depends on how many houses are around the volcano or that uh, fissure uh, that could open on, on, on the ground. Yeah, we, we shouldn't forget that we, we are too many on, on, on the island, actually the uh, population density is uh, higher than in UK, so we've got roads, motorways, uh, water channels, underground water channels, uh, a big amount of um, <clears throat> water wells around the island, um, around 400 wells, uh, over 1,000 uh, horizontal tunnels or uh, water galleries. So any of these infrastructure could be damaged by a future uh, volcanic eruption, whether that is uh, Hawaiian or Strombolian or uh, Suplinian or Plinian. For sure there will be some sort of damage. So if we suddenly uh, start feeling a great amount of earthquakes, and at the same time we notice some sort of deformation together with a uh, big amount of uh, gases coming out from the ground well uh, possibly the chances of having one will increase well, we want to uh, study 
is to see how frequent this eruption can be. At the moment we have a record that tells us that uh, eruptions of this type may happen every few tens of thousands of years. Uh, but uh, we are filling gaps in the record and maybe we are going to realize that this eruption may be more frequent than we think. Uh, the last eruption of this type that uh, was not didn't cause a lot of damage because still, as far as we know, there were no pyroclastic flows associated to it. The last linear eruption happened 2,000 years ago only. We are not talking about tens of thousands, we are talking about 2,000 years ago. Uh, so that is a bit uh, worrying at least from the point of view of the potential destructive character of this eruption. Eh? The population has grown a lot here, and all the Tenerife is populated. And, and, uh, so, we need to know, really, what is the potential uh, frequency of these eruptions, and we should also try to uh, figure out ways of evacuation or, or I don't know but uh, we really need to start planning for for a potential explosive eruption that may take place in the very future. We want to make decisions about whether or not we should come to a volcanic island we must first always weigh up the level of risk. From what I have learned during my time here as a geo intern is that the chance of an explosive eruption is slim to nothing. So we can all come to Tenerife with the peace of mind that everything will probably be okay.